Hey guys, watch the next 30 seconds and then we'll talk. So all the footage you just watched in that mini montage at the Santa Monica Pier was shot on this lens, the Canon 28 to 300 millimeter. So through the years, I've come to save and acquire a handful of all-star lenses. I have a telephoto 70 to 200, I have a 50 millimeter prime, 85 millimeter prime, a 16 to 35 2.8, which I'm shooting on right now, and then the, uh, the 24 105, and also a 100 millimeter macro Canon lens. I use all these different lenses and they're all great, but with this lens, I was curious of, what if when I was starting out, if I just would have bought this? instead of having to buy two or three of those other lenses earlier on, which cost three or four times the price. I, I did a review on this lens, kind of a traditional camera review where I went around taking photos and I look at the body and there'll be a link to that video at the end of this video. But this video I wanted to focus on really comparing it versus the other lenses. And if you're gonna make a purchase into L glass, what lens you should buy first. So I have used this lens, the Canon 24-105, the last couple years, and it has been a beast at getting B-roll. I can get wide shots, and then I can zoom it all the way into uh, 100 and get nice portraits and kind of close-ups of people, and it's been a really great lens. It worked really well for handheld coverage because it's not too heavy. It only goes to 100 millimeters, and anything past 100 millimeters is too telephoto that even though the image is stabiliz stabilized, uh, along with this one, once you put this one past 100 millimeters, you really need a tripod or a monopod, otherwise you're just gonna get some shake because it's a zoomed in shot. And also, it's heavy, so you're not gonna wanna do handheld coverage with this. The thing about this lens though, it's, it's just over $2,000. It is expensive, but you can't buy two of any of the other Canon lenses without being at $2,000, and you may not even get as much as you're getting in this. One of the question is primes, okay? You're like, but it's only 3.5 to 5.6, that's not good enough low light. First of all, if you're gonna be buying this lens, it's gonna be primarily for outdoor coverage and I'm focusing specifically on video. And though I have the 50 millimeter and the 85 millimeter prime, and those are great lenses, when shooting video, especially 4K video, I oftentimes don't wanna to go to those low apertures because it just looks weird in video. Sometimes when you're shooting someone's face and it's just the background's completely blurred out, there's no reference point. You, they don't even know where they are. And it just looks very kind of, in my mind, kind of amateur. So you do want some depth of field and you want there to be someone in focus and the background to be slightly out of focus, but you really don't want to overdo it. And that's something I've really tried to improve upon now making the jump to 4K. The aperture 3.5 at the widest point, that's just as good as this is, you know, F4 throughout. So it's just about the same amount as the 24-105 um, in terms of aperture, but it also goes from 100 all the way to 300. After doing a review on just photography, I like this lens and I said I might buy it, but I'm not gonna buy it tomorrow. But after using this lens for video, it just was incredible. You know, I went over and got 
the, after shooting at the Santa Monica Pier and I was around a lot of the people, I went north to kind of a secluded beach uh, closer to Malibu and just getting coverage of these surfers out there. I stood in one spot the whole time and I was getting intimate shots with surfers out there on the board and then I could zoom out and just get a pretty much a wide shot of half the beach. There are certain shoots you don't want to take your lens off. Actually being at the beach is a perfect example. You couldn't pay me to change lenses right there in the sand. One slip up and you know, you, you got sand on your sensor, you got sand in places on the lens, you don't wanna have sand. So if, if I owned this lens, even with all the other lenses I have in certain jobs, this would be the only lens I would use. The other lenses are great and the other lenses have the ability to go to lower apertures and can give me depth of field at times if I need. But I really think if I owned this, I would probably use it over 50% of the time. This thing really is the king of B-roll. And when you're shooting in 4K, you want a tripod, you want a monopod, you want stable, clear shots. And this thing is the king. The more I work with it, the more I think about it, the more I just want it in the bag, the more it makes so much sense. If you're starting out and you've got all these dreams over, ah, oh, prime lenses and all these things, I think you should shift your dreams a bit and just focus on, man, if I could get that one lens, I could get seriously to work. And I'm speaking in terms of, if you're starting a business or you're a growing filmmaker and you're shooting weddings or you're shooting jobs for different businesses and you're getting going, like this lens can put you to work right away. If I would go back and do it again after my experience with this lens, this probably would be the first or second lens I would buy. Seriously considering about getting it. Just gotta talk to management, and see if we can make a trade. I don't really wanna make a trade. Hopefully we can acquire it via free agency. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.